Let's talk about the Amityville horror. No, not that one. This one, the one with Ryan Reynolds in it, based on a 1974 real life incident because every 2000s horror film decided it needed to be based off a real tragedy for some reason. <laughs> Myself and Stu are going to chat about Deadpool versus the family. It's. Uh... Sorry? <laughs> 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 so you just suddenly started yodeling. Do you not like it? See, I don't mind this film. It's just got nothing at the end, but we'll get to that. We will. I don't mind this film. I think it's actually all right. It's, I mean, it's not amazing. Yeah, it didn't, like, offend me or anything. It's just, it kind of, for me, is just the definition of mid-2000s mainstream horror. Every fucking film coming out that made, like, $150 million at the cinema was like, it's about a dark house with a really, really, really dark past. And that's it. <laughs> I actually watched this with my son just to mm. kind of do it and um, there was a bit in it where he just said the house is shaped like a cock <laughs> and I was like alright <laughs> but yeah essentially it just starts with like a man loading a gun because the TV's telling him to kill his family she just goes in and blasts them all while they sleep but it just has this weird like constant flashing over the top which is just a bit mm. difficult to watch it's so overly stylized. like you'll get like moments that they're kind of intending this is a really tense scary moment but the sound soundtrack to it is like fucking the dark night it's <laughs> <laughs> i guess like because they were showing someone like descending because I, I guess again my son made a really good point he was like you know typically when you see possession in films people like slowly get beaten down by what is ever happening until they're at like a weak point and then they're possessed and i guess he's absolutely right it's fair play to him he's only 12 and he nailed it but like essentially that's what happens in this film but it makes it a bit of a slow burner right because you're you're essentially like waiting for him to just progressively get more and more crazy over time and I think that takes quite a while like it's quite slow to begin with and it takes a while to like ramp up even though there's always stuff happening yeah I agree I think Ryan Reynolds actually does quite a good job when he gets into his sort of dark sinister kind of persona so I guess we'll go into the premise a bit more of the film it's a bit like straightforward really the Lutz family they buy this house uh, in Amityville uh, which is a, a suburb of New York and they move in and yeah it's just the case that a bunch of sketchy stuff has happened in the house in the past. The real life story of this was a guy shot and killed six members of his family in 1974. They made a film of it in 79 and then this is a remake of that 79 film. From what I remember, like years ago looking at it, didn't they catch him out because he had like hidden the shotgun and he'd hidden evidence like under the floor and in the air vents and things like that and they basically said, well if you're possessed by the devil you don't go and hide evidence do you? And that's how they caught him out and sentenced him I think. From what I remember anyway it's something like that. <laughs> I'll do two versions. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep and, it to it. You? Nah, nah, you got to not fucking... Absolutely nowhere near. You you've, stupid... <laughs> you've, got to have the, you've got to keep them both in the edit. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Delete as, <laughs> as applicable. Yeah, we meet his family, don't we? Ryan Reynolds and his little family. But to be fair, the 12-year-old kid is a right little gobshite from the beginning. So I was kind of hoping that he'd die anyway. And they say he's 12. He isn't 12. My son is 12. This kid is 34. He literally... <laughs> looks like Jack Black. <laughs> You know, not when Jack Black <laughs> used to be in Tenacious D. He, yeah. He looks like that. <laughs> well, he, do, he looks exactly like that, but he is just a tribute. He is just, yeah. Well played. I do quite like the house for the most part, but it just comes across as generic American house. It's a weird house, isn't it? Because at some points it looks like just a normal size house, and then other times it looks like the mansion from Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> 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 you know, they're like climbing all over the roofs and you think, this house wasn't that big from the outside. And the boathouse constantly seems to change size as well. On the outside, it's massive, but once you're in it, it's tiny. Yeah. Also, why do the ghosts, they just move some chairs about and shit to start with, and then the most ominous bit for about 45 minutes of this film is that the ghosts take those little alphabetic <laughs> magnets and just move them around to some ominous message on the fridge about killing everyone. <laughs> See, that to me is so, like, on the nose as well. Like, oh, how can we, like, get the message across that this house is evil? We'll just have it spell it out. It's convenient they've got them on the fridge in the first place, because otherwise they'd be like, ah. Oh. What if they just had random magnets from, like, all the places <laughs> they visited <laughs> on the holiday? <laughs> yeah, they've just got, yeah, like, the little Tenerife crab. <laughs> they've got a little palm tree from Miami. <laughs> 
<laughs> also, why is the babysitter such a nonce? The standout thing in this film, she's just a full-on fucking slag. She is. I couldn't work it out. Like, why? Like, she's obviously, I don't know, like meant to be 18 or whatever or at least yeah. 18 the kid that she's like trying to basically seduce is 12 yeah maybe she thought it was jack black and she was like i yeah. love tenacious d i really like kicking poo i want some of that tenacious d yeah i do i really do <laughs> i want you to kick my poo but also <laughs> that's horrendous i'm so sorry <laughs> That but, wasn't worth it. I'm yeah. gonna have to keep it in those. <laughs> Why on earth did he not crack on though? Like he's twelve. Oh, yeah. Surely, surely at that age he's a bit like. Well, my my son's in the room. He's looking at me, going, "What the hell are you on about, Dad?" He's <laughs> nodding his head. You saw the babysitter. Come here a sec, because you can you can say no. Come here, please. I'm saying that he might have cracked on with an 18 year old babysitter. It's a bit weird. Why is it weird? Because she's 18. Yeah, but she was also pretty banging. But she's 18. Uh huh. So it's yeah, a bit you, weird. Why it? is it weird? And also, it'd be weird if you were 18 and she was 12. I, but yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, but what I don't, also don't understand is that the the two younger kids are just sitting on the sofa downstairs while they're like in the room, just like yeah. But that's what like, you have to do, though. I know, but that's like, what you have to do. But like, sometimes me and your mum have to be like, "Phrase, <laughs> go play Nintendo Switch." <laughs> <laughs> Can't do the devil's tango. But then the kid just, <laughs> but then the kids walk in, and then a second later she's being eaten alive. She don't get eaten. I know, but she's like literally like a second later, she's just in a cabinet, locked in a cabinet. She's in a wardrobe, and she sees the little devil child, doesn't she? And then which, like, I don't know. She just stands there, and then all of a sudden she's paralysed. Yeah, well, the wardrobe <laughs> fucks her instead, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 that leaves the wardrobe, her legs trembling for all the. <laughs> Wrong reasons, <laughs> didn't it? Got, Jesus is it, you wish you weren't in this room while I was doing I'm this, weren't you? Out. You weirded out. Yes. I'm sorry. I was joking about the Nintendo Switch. No, thing. you weren't. We've only ever done it once, and that's when you were conceived, and then we've never touched each other again. <laughs> Promise. Believable. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, son. If I'm your son. You are my son. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. There we go. Welcome to the ghouls, Frizz. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So, to segue back in. So, the dog, the family dog, right, there's a part where it just is, like, eating away at a hole, I guess, near where the basement is. I'm going to put the clip in now. I fucking swear that Darth Vader breathes through this hole in the wall. <laughs> I'm certain. That poor doggo. Bit unnecessary, innit? And then he, like, lifts the collar up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is it? A quick rub and a squeezy squeeze <laughs> to find some drugs. <laughs> Maybe it was, There's like, the, the, the axe is, like, the tent from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> you just touch the dog. <laughs> disappeared forever. What pisses me off is that this fucking horror film is based on the real life massacre of six people and every one of them gets away you've got three kids at least make one of them fucking expendable at least make the wife expendable at least have ryan reynolds kill himself you know what i mean have yeah. something happen other than oh it was all for nothing and we're all fine but the bit that really really annoyed me was the way near the end when ryan reynolds and the wife are in the boathouse and she just falls into the water and gets her hair trapped in the boat propeller what makes her fall into the water is he just shines a torch at her. <laughs> yeah, she stood static and then the light shines in her face and she suddenly slips four feet to the left. <laughs> what the fuck is this? It's like watching Neymar get tackled. She just goes <laughs> flying for no reason. And, and then, then Sol Campbell's her way into the fucking water. Yeah. Like, yeah. The never-ending tackle. Absolute bollocks. And then even the ending ending is a bag of wank this. Like, the shotgun girl who appears throughout the film. Here's what irritates me about this shot. In... The, the world of the film. She's standing in the house at the bottom of the stairs staring at the audience before a random CGI pair of hands pulls her through the floor. Why does this happen in the world of this film? Yeah, it doesn't really make any sense, does it? Me, I, 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 like, yeah, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> An Amityville Horror, 2005. <sighs> See, I only watched this like one day before we recorded this. 90% of it has gone out my head because it's just blended with every other horror that I've seen from the 2000s. It is a bit something or nothing, but I don't think it's that bad. It's just yeah. it's just not good. Like, it's very bang average. Very mid, yeah. It's not something I think I'd sit really attentively and watch, but certainly like filling a void kind of film for sure. Yeah, that's true. And if you're filling a void in your life by listening to us talk about this film, then let us know what you thought about it and our review. We have got a review of it, actually. There's a segue for you. <laughs> check that one out. But yeah, honest review, done. Do you want us to check the original? No. Nah. Never mind. <laughs> Question already answered. Back of the queue. <laughs> 